this particular area is very interesting it's very different why because the immune system is specialized here and its functions are specialized so it makes mucosal immunity unique and we'll discuss all those different unique aspects of mucosal immunity now if i just go through the learning objectives what are those different things that i'll be focusing on first the specialized components of the mucosal immunity then in the infection and defense module we learned about different antibodies like igg iga igm d and e the functions of ige were discussed in little more detail with respect to immediate hypersensitivity and igg antibacterial uh, functions but iga was just all that we told you was that it has antiviral effects but not more than that but it has some specialized you know production method why it is specialized you know specially produced in the mucosal immune system we'll see that and then finally another interesting situation of the git is that there are a lot of commensal bacteria and they are good or bad good good and then there are pathogenic bacteria or you know pathogens so how the immune system keep a balance between the two walaikum assalam recognizing the commensals as the good and maintaining healthy environment and then recognizing the pathogenic and start acting against them so this balance we'll we'll discuss this aspect as well so again the outlines are same we'll first discuss the organization and the function of the immune components wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how you look to yes you're welcome you already told me that you are going to observe yeah, yeah just you know to see how the class interaction goes on you, no problem i had actually permission from dr umar bazara yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fine so just sit here and see so you can just continue yes that's absolutely fine please welcome and then the mucosal tolerance against the commensals and finally the induction of immune response against the pathogenic bacteria so first there is a question for you how is the mucosal immune system different from systemic immune system is there a difference between the two yeah it is specialized but you know i have felt in my previous years experience that students have a slightly misunderstanding regarding the lymphocytes for example the cells of the adaptive immune system where exactly they are are they all in the blood or circulatory system or are, are they in the mucosal system where they reside mainly mucosa. lymphoid system mucosa. in the mucosa okay there are two different views one of your colleague is saying that it's in the lymph nodes one is saying it's in the mucosa what about the blood sorry so they are actually let me write down some interesting fact about it so if you look at the spleen there are about this many lymphocytes and if you look at the bone marrow now coming on to the mucosa git just has around and skin we are talking about absolute numbers so spleen has this many lymphocytes so adaptive immune cells bone marrow has this much git skin they both make basically the mucosa your mucosal immunity so they have got this many lymphocytes so there is a kind of a very well distributed lymphocytes in the blood in the bone marrow in the mucosal tissue so they are everywhere but they are specialized in these areas these ones are very specialized for the gi tract now 
as I said, one of the challenges for the mucosal immunity is that it has to protect you against the pathogens and then at the same time do not respond to food as well as commensals. And this is achieved by specialized lymphocytes here in the systemic. They deal with the systemic uh, pathogens while in the mucosal immunity these cells, they are specialized and they function differently and we will see how. Now another thing is before going into the details, what you have to see is how is the organization of mucosal immune system? Which tissues are involved in the mucosal immune system? Malt. Malt. What is malt? M-A-L-T? Lymphoid tissue. Then galt. What is galt? So galt, malt and nalt, does that make the mucosa, mucosal immunity? Free lymph nodes, very good. What else? Penet cells. Okay, we'll see all of that. I'm asking these questions because, uh, again, they arise from the confusion of the students in the previous years. So yes, there is ga gastrointestinal tract, bronchopulmonary system has immune cells, then the uh, genitourinary tract has and then there are different lymph nodes that have all the immune cells. So, of course, GALT, BALT, NALT, which is nasal associated lymphoid tissue, genitourinary, lacrimal, salivary gland and mammary gland. But the thing you need to remember is that it's, these things are just like lymph nodes. They are not, of course, lymph nodes because lymph nodes have a proper capsule around them. So, these are just aggregates of lymphocyte, well organized aggregates, but they are just small part of it. Remember that. When we tell GALT or NALT or BALT, we, we mean that specialized areas in the genitourinary, in the bronchopulmonary, in the uh, GI tract. Okay? Other than that, these lymphocytes, these ones and these ones, they are scattered. So, they are in the lamina propria, they are in the, you know, close to epithelium and then they are also organized. So, just remember this, mucosal immunity does not just mean GALT, but in fact, this plus this plus this, all these and then some remaining lymphocytes which will be, you will see, they are scattered otherwise, they all together make the mucosal immunity. Is this clear to everyone? Okay. So this is just an example. What you can see here is these things or the, uh, you know, for example, the mesenteric lymph nodes can be seen here. The sublingual or mandibular lymph nodes can be seen here. But what you cannot see is the other cells that are in the lamina propria and close to the epithelium. So now we'll see a little bit more detail. So here's the picture of a gut. It's a section where you can see villi. You can see crypts, pears patches. So this is one organized galt, okay? And then the M cells. I'll just go through all of them one by one. First thing, commensal bacteria. How many different bacteria, commensal bacteria are there in the GIT? Do you know anything? Many. 500 different species have been identified so far, okay? 500 different species. So your immune system has to be very well tolerant to those 500 different species. Then, goblet cells, they secrete the mucus, which is a protective layer. Villi, they are mainly responsible for absorption of the nutrients. Intestinal epithelial cells. Now here, one very important concept that you have to remember is, which will, you know, make the foundation for your understanding. If the epithelium is intact, the major driving force inside is healthy environment towards tolerance. Remember this, that when the epithelium of the GI tract, this one, which is running all the way in the crypts, on the villi, here, everywhere, if this epithelium is intact, then there is a healthy environment towards tolerance. There won't be any response. So they will, you know, basically keep a calm environment, no immune response, just stay stable. That's why most of the bacterias, they try to penetrate or invade these epithelial cells first. 
And I'll just give one small example. These M cells, I'll come to its function later, but Salmonella typhi, for example, it tries to destroy this M cell, and when it destroys it, then it penetrates inside the so then your active immune system against the pathogen, it will start driving and it dominates. But before that, if the epithelium is strong, it is intact, no damage occur, everything inside is going to be calmful and it's going to be toward men maintaining a healthy environment. Okay, so I'll tell you two different groups, which deals, one deals with the healthy environment and then the other one deals with the immune response against the pathogens. So everything is fine, epithelium intact, it will contain a healthy environment. Intraepithelial lymphocytes. Which lymphocytes are these? Intraepithelium lymphocytes. Is macrophage a lymphocyte? Intra epithelial lymphocytes, 90% of them are okay, 10% are gamma delta T cells. There are very few CD4 cells here in the intra epithelial layer here. Okay, and why are they here? Because they are mainly protecting against the viral infections. Okay, that's why they are dominating. Then coming to the pear patches, as I said, organized structure of what? Dendritic cell, macrophages, B cell, follicular dendritic cell. Just imagine like a lymph node, all those cells well organized just without a capsule. Okay. Then M cells, M cells are very specialized in what? Antigen sampling. So it's just like a carrier or a truck that takes the antigen from the luminal surface, bring it inside and then push it inside the pear patches. So it's going to transport the antigen inside. Okay. Then crypts, here you have got penet cells which are mainly known for producing antimicrobial agents and goblet cells I've already told you it produces mucus IgA antibodies IgA antibodies in the GI tract are all dimeric you can see here there are two molecules one and two joined together by a J chain joining chain so two molecules of IgA are there and it is produced here in the lamina propria and then secreted into the lumen. And then finally mesentric, uh, mesentric lymph nodes, like other lymph nodes that we saw in the previous slide, what's happening here? They, there is one inductive phase where you catch the antigen and recognize it. But it is presented where it will be taken from the pear patches to these lymph nodes. Okay, and then from these lymph nodes, these cells, effector cells will come back into the lamina propria. So this is the circulatory pathway. Okay, first it will be recognized, here it will be captured by M cells or directly by the dendritic cell, then it will be taken to these lymph nodes, here the active or effector T cells or regula you know, regulatory T cells or Th1, Th2, they will be produced and then these effector cells will come back here in the lamina propria. And just to add one very important information, what helps in this trafficking? You will be surprised to know, vitamin A, retinoic acid. It's just like a ticket or an address. So the dendritic cell, when it has retinoic acid, it captures the antigen, it has vitamin A, it comes to the lymph node, then it produces certain special effector cells, it's just like an address. And when it activates this T cell, with this address, T cell know exactly that it has to go back to this lamina propria. So it's the retinoic acid or vitamin A that helps in the homing of effector T cells back to the lamina propria. Everyone gets it? Okay. So for example, I am a dendritic cell. I capture the antigen. 
in the pairs patches here like for example this dendritic cell it is trying to capture the antigen when it gets it at the same time presence of vitamin A or retinoic acid it's just like an address you know it's like where I have to go back so that address is written down on dendritic cell in the form of vitamin A or with the help of retinoic acid now I am going to a T cell so I will with the first signal and the co-stimulatory signal activate a T cell a TH1, TH2 or TH17 whatever after activating I show them the address here you have to go ok so vitamin A helps the T cell know after activation where it has to go so that address is shown then this active T cell is going to go back from here to lamina propria is it now clear so vitamin A or retinoic acid is just like the address it imprints the address on the active T cells and then they go back for their function now as I said mucosal immunity is not just about GALT, BALT, NALT it is one part of it so in the pairs patch what happened the induction phase they catch the antigen so you can see here that GALT or pairs patches NALT or BALT there the induction phase takes place then they go into the mesenteric lymph nodes why to activate the cells once they are activated one what they have to do then they have to go back to lamina propria so this is the effector site once they are activated into what whether T regs TH1 TH2 TH17 it doesn't matter or even the plasma cells that are producing IgA these are dimeric immunoglobulin A they all then go back where to the lamina propria they have to go back to the lamina propria so is it clear now that in the GALT or in the pairs patches the induction take place then they take them to the lymph nodes induction is completed it starts at the GALT it completes at the lymph node then they go back to the lamina propria to perform the function so that's why I was saying that when I say what is mucosal immunity students say GALT, NALT, what? yes GALT will just do the initiation of the immune, system, immune response but its function completes at the lamina propria so you have to remember that all the lymphocytes, dendritic cells, intraepithelial cells they are all part of the mucosal immunity now this is little more detail about the induction of a response here is a pairs patch here is an M cell what M cell do it helps in sampling of the antigen so what is this sampling you can see it can throw pseudopods capture the bacteria and then present it to the dendritic cell there is no specialized processing you remember MHC class 1 and 2 they specially chop the bacteria make them specialized processed with the help of MHC class 1 and 2 that does not take place here they just capture it and bring it inside that's all very simple so what is missing when they do not chop them do not present them with specialized uh, receptors that first is there danger signal here involved no so very less chances of a very active immune response so this mainly is very good for commensal bacteria. they are now just introducing tolerance then I have to also tell you that there are two types of dendritic cell remember this one are called as the regulatory regulatory dendritic cells they have certain fixed receptors on their surface so for example as this is the dendritic cell they have got CD11B it's positive for this then they have got another no sorry it's not CD11B it's CD103 ok so dendritic cells which have got CD103 they are regulatory in nature so whenever they will capture the antigen they will result in regulatory T cell response calm down the immune response so what will be the second step they will always present the antigen to T cell and the T cell will be converted into T reg 
yeah and what it can produce then t reg il 10 tgf beta so these are when you are talking about commensals okay commensals will be sampled through m cells antigen taken this group of dendritic cell takes it with the help of 103 presented to T cell, these T cells are converted into T regs and then they come in the lamina propria and say no response to this particular commensal. Okay. Then at the same time there is another group of dendritic cell which is called as effector T cell, effector dendritic cell. This effector dendritic cell, it has got different receptors. It has got CD11B and CX3CR1 positive. When the dendritic cell has this one, what it is going to do? It will present the antigen to T cell and the T cell will be converted into either TH1, TH2 or TH17. Now to tell you the most dominating ones are TH17 here in the uh, mucosal immunity. The most dominating ones are TH17 and TH17 is going to further activate the neutrophils. And the TH1 are going to basically help the B cells to do what? To produce dimeric. IgA class switching. So there is a balance between these two different types of uh, dendritic cells, the regulatory ones and the effector one. So one dendritic cell is capable of extending its arm into the right into the lumen to catch the antigen and then take it to the mesenteric lymph node presented to the T cell whether this one or this one depending is it a commensal or is it a pathogenic bacteria and a pathogenic will be dealt by TH1, TH17 while a commensal will be dealt by a T regulatory cell. So far everyone is okay. Yes. In case Regulation means that it will not, first is the double signals are not there. So weak signals will already push the T cell toward a regulatory function. And then further when it start producing IL-10, TGF beta, it will not allow activation against that bacteria by anything, by macro. Normally the T cell is the boss, it gives the order, tells the macrophage, kill the pathogen by the help of interferon gamma. But now IL-10, it will not give any order. So macrophages will not be activated. Then normally interferon gamma also tells CD8 cells capture or destroy this cell. Again IL-10 and TGF beta it will not do that. So all the communication between the immune cells is through cytokines. One group of cytokines say do this. Another group of cytokines say don't do this. This regulatory is about don't do anything. Just stay calm. These are our friends. So as I said, intraepithelial cells are CD8 cells, 90%, 10% are gamma delta. Now what they can do, so a lot of when you are you know, exposed to the environment, you eat food or ingest anything, there are possibilities of a lot of viruses going into your GI tract. These viruses, as virus has one special quality, it goes into the cell, take control, yes? So here you can see this is the epithelial cell which has got the viruses. Now CD8 cell, alpha beta T cell, which are 90% of intraepithelial lymphocytes, it come and recognize it. How it will recognize? MHC, MHC class 1, excellent. So once they are recognized, this uh, T cell is going to kill the epithelial cell with the help of perforins, granzymes and fast mediated killing. Now little bit about the IgA antibodies or immunoglobulins that are produced at the mucosal surfaces is first thing is that they have resistance against common intestinal proteases. Lot of enzymes are produced in the small bowel, yes? 
So these, if continue into the lumen, there is a very good possibility that the IgA which is produced inside the lamina propria and then released into the lumen, it will be destroyed. So there must be a mechanism to protect it. And what is the mechanism? First thing is, this is one monomer joined to another monomer with the help of J chain, joining chain, okay? Then later it has got a secretory component on top of it. It's like a protein coat. What it does, it prevents any enzymatic activity. So all the proteases, they cannot destroy this dimeric structure of IgA. Another important thing is that it is not able to activate the complement system and cannot cause opsonization. IgG can cause, IgM can cause, but IgA cannot cause opsonization and complement activation. Is it good or bad? Uh, why is it good? The answer is correct. Very good. We don't want any damage to the epithelium. So there must be a very nice and silent way of performing the function. What is that way? So first we will see how the IgA is produced and then we will look at its function. I have already little bit explained here. So let us say the antigen has entered the through M cells into the pair patches. Here it will go into two parts. Number one is the dendritic cell will take it. Let us imagine it is the effector dendritic cell. It presented to the naive T cell and at the same time B cells will take this antigen and come to the effector T cell with the help of CD40, CD40 ligand. And when this co-stimulation take place, what will happen? Class switching. So Ig, this B cell which was producing IgM now will start producing IgA. This IgA will come here and will be released into the lumen. Now this release is not as simple. In the next slide you can see that what are the steps involved. So this is the plasma cell. It produces first IgA. Then one very important step is it will also be bound by this. You know you can see, protection. yeah, no, it's another protection. One is secretory chain around the IgA that protects it in the lumen and another is which helps it go into the lysosome of the epithelium and then help in the cleavage of the epithelium and to go out. So it's kind of a transporter, a transporter that carries it from the lamina propria into the lumen. And this transporter is called as polyimmunoglobulin receptor. Poly means many immunoglobulin receptor. So it's a receptor which can bind to many IgA to transport it across into the lumen. Now once this secretory IgA is pushed into the lumen, it performs its functions all the way from the lamina propria till the luminal surface. How it does? First thing, this secretory immunoglobulin IgA which is in the lumen, it can bind to the toxins. You can see these red dots are the toxins. When it binds to them, the toxin don't have the ability to enter the epithelium. They cannot invade them. So they will be just excreted out of the body. Number two, when they are crossing, some of the toxins that have invaded inside the epithelium in the lysosome, these immunoglobulins can also bind them and take them back into the lumen. Okay, so they can perform neutralization in the luminal surface, inside the epithelium, and also can carry some of them from the lamina propria and take them all the way to the luminal surface. So their main job is bind to the toxin, bacteria, virus, whatever, and take it out. Don't do anything stupid. Just bind them, neutralize them, and get rid of them. So now oral tolerance is very important because it will prevent you against the immune response to certain foods. And how it happens, first thing is in the beginning, if you remember in the tolerance, I told you central tolerance inside the thymus, all the bad cells are deleted so that they cannot attack your body. Then if some of them comes in, they will be energized non-functional, kind of switched off. 
they are there but because they don't get the first signal and the second signal so they won't be active so they are energized and finally the regulatory t cells which are produced in the thyroid